I invite you to stand. Dear friends in Christ, on this most holy night, when our Lord Jesus Christ passed from death to life, the church invites her children throughout the world to come together in vigil and prayer. This is the Passover of the Lord. We remember his death and resurrection by hearing his word and celebrating his mysteries. We are confident that we shall share his victory over death and live with him forever in God. Let us pray. Father, we share in the light of your glory through your Son, the light of the world. Sanctify this new fire and inflame us with new hope. Purify our minds by this Easter celebration and bring us one day to the feast of eternal light. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Rejoice, heavenly powers, sing choirs of angels. Exalt all creation around God's throne. Jesus Christ, our King, is risen. Sound the trumpet of salvation. Rejoice, O earth, in shining splendor. Radiant in the brightness of your King, Christ has conquered, glory fills you. Darkness vanishes forever. 
Rejoice, O Mother Church, exalt in glory. The risen Savior shines upon you. Let this place resound with joy, echoing the mighty song of all God's people. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us, gi let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right that with full hearts and minds and voices, we should praise the unseen God, the all-powerful Father, and his only Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For Christ has ransomed us with his blood and paid for us the price of Adam's sin to our eternal Father. This is our Passover feast, when Christ the true Lamb is slain, whose blood consecrates the homes of all believers. This is the night when first you saved our forebearers, you freed the people of Israel from their slavery and led them dry shod through the sea. This is the night when Christians everywhere washed clean of sin and freed from all defilement are restored to grace and grow together in holiness. This is the night when Jesus Christ broke the chains of death and rose triumphant from the grave. Father, how wonderful your care for us, how boundless your merciful love. To ransom a slave, you gave away your son. The power of this holy night dispels all evil, washes guilt away, restores lost innocence, brings mourners joy. Night truly blessed, when heaven is wedded to earth, and we are reconciled with God. Therefore, Heavenly Father, in the joy of this night, receive our evening sacrifice of praise, your church's solemn offering. Accept this Easter candle, May it always dispel the darkness of this night. May the morning star which never sets find this flame still burning. Christ, that morning star, who came back from the dead and shed his peaceful light on all creation. Your Son, who lives and reigns, forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, let us now listen attentively to the word of God, recalling how he saved his people throughout history, and in the fullness of time, sent his own Son to be our Redeemer. The first reading is from the book of Exodus. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have, what have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone, let us serve the Egyptians. 
for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid, stand firm, and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you only have to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, all his chariots, and all his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his chariot drivers. The angel of the Lord, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on the dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord and the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, Let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on the left and on their right. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw that the Egyptians were dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians, so the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and his great servant Moses. Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I will sing to the Lord, for he is lofty and uplifted. The horse and its rider has he hurt into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my Savior. This is 
Let us pray. God of steadfast love, your wonderful deeds of old shine forth even to our own day. By the power of your mighty arm, you once delivered your chosen people from slavery under Pharaoh to be a sign for us of salvation of all nations by the waters of baptism. Grant that all the peoples of the earth may be numbered among the offspring of Abraham and rejoice in the inheritance of Israel. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The second reading is taken from the book of Ezekiel. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your uncleanliness and from all your idols I will cleanse you. A new heart I will give you and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and make you follow my statues and be careful to observe my ordinances. Then you shall live in the land that I gave to your ancestors and you shall be my people and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yes. 
Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, in the Paschal mystery you established the new creation of reconciliation. Grant that all who are born again in baptism may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Grant this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The third reading is from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all round them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Morto, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, 
and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. 
Living God, by the Passover of your Son, you have brought us out of sin into righteousness and out of death into life. Grant to those who are sealed by your Holy Spirit the will and power to proclaim you to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together. Glory be to God on high. You light the candles first with the altar, please. praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, Lamb of God, O O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us, for Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. Eternal giver of life and light, this holy night shines with the radiance of the risen Christ. Renew your church with the spirit given to us in baptism, that we may worship you in sincerity and truth, and shine as a light in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the next reading. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body of sin might be destroyed, 
and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Early on the first day of the week, 
While it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look in the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Darkness on the face of the deep, the formless beginning, the chaos, the void, the wind and the word, God's breath, God's speech, summoning things never known before. Life and light, the first day, creation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word became flesh. The flesh has spoken, breathed, brought life and light. New creation has spilled out around him wherever he has gone. The sixth day, creation is complete. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. Flesh dies, chaos comes again. Darkness descends on the little group weeping at the cross. 
then the long Sabbath, the rest in that cold tomb. After all the events of Friday, it was good to find some quiet time to process everything. The sound of those nails being pounded into the cross, the darkness, the smell of death were overwhelming. So it was good to observe Sabbath, to have some time to think. Perhaps all of the disciples needed that day to come to terms with the way things had played out. It wasn't what anyone had expected. And getting over the shock of realizing that Jesus was really dead would take some time. What would happen now without a leader? Peter could have taken over, but he was just as devastated as everyone else. The disciple that Jesus loved had been sticking close to Peter's side as everyone huddled together in the room. There had been talk all day, hushed whispers, loud wailings, each one grieving, everyone trying to figure out what to do next. While some kept watch in case the religious leaders came looking for more disciples to arrest, others slept or tried to eat. A few talked through the night trying to decide some course of action, but in the end, no one had a good idea. And almost everyone had dozed off by the time morning came. No one even noticed Mary slipping out while it was still dark outside. And now still in darkness, the first day of the week, the new week, the new creation, eyes red from weeping and sleepless nights, women at the tomb, perhaps to bring more spices, perhaps just to weep, perhaps just to be there because there was nowhere else to be, nothing else to do, nothing else that mattered that would ever matter. Mary Magdalene doesn't feature in John's Gospel until her appearance with the other Marys at the foot of the cross. John has told us nothing of her history, and the little that we know, we know from the other Gospels. But her place here is spectacular. She is the first apostle, the apostle to the apostles, the first to bring the news that the tomb was empty. And in a little while, a greater privilege yet, the first to see, to meet, to speak with the risen Christ himself. Our text begins simply, while it was still dark, that first Easter morning. Mary Magdalene treks to the tomb. She notices the stone has been moved away, and without any further checking, she concludes that something is very wrong. What had happened was obvious, since Jesus had been dead, and since Mary knew what dead looked like, and how undeniably Jesus had fit that bill the past Friday. If he wasn't in the tomb where they had laid him, then someone had taken him. Mary does the only thing she can think of, and she runs to find Peter and tell him what's happened. The disciple that Jesus loved was still with Peter, and like Mary, they run. There is more running in these verses than the rest of the Gospels combined. The unnamed disciple, perhaps younger, arrives first. He peeks inside, and sure enough, the tomb is open and empty. And unlike the case of the four days dead Lazarus, who stumbled out of his tomb, hindered by his burial wrappings. The cloths are still in the tomb. It didn't look like they had been taken off. They were lying there in their regular folds, as if the body of Jesus had simply evaporated out of them. Peter, out of breath, arrives at the tomb a few moments later, and acting in true character, he rushes right into the tomb. After Peter has gone in, the other disciple goes in as well. 
John tells us that the beloved disciples saw and believed. But what did he believe? It could be that he believed Mary was correct, that someone had stolen the body of Jesus. Or did he believe that what Jesus had said the night of their last meal together had come true, that Jesus had conquered the world? The two disciples leave, scratching their heads, unsure of what has happened. The focus returns to Mary, standing outside the tomb. Weeping, she does this time enter the tomb. It would seem that neither Peter nor the other disciple have offered any words of comfort or encouragement to Mary. But Mary does not find an empty tomb. It was empty just a moment ago, but now there are two angels sitting there calmly, asking a simple question. Woman, why are you weeping? This might seem like an odd question, since Mary is standing in front of a new grave. It's a place where people normally weep. But they know something that she hasn't quite accepted yet. Mary is still stuck in the he's dead reality of her own limited understanding. She has not yet grasped the impossible fact that Jesus is alive. She can only answer, they've taken him away and I don't know where they've put him. As she turns around, she sees a man standing there who asks her the same question. Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Her answer is another repetition of the theme, I don't know where they've taken him. And then Jesus says her name, Mary. Mary is perhaps the greatest Easter story ever told. In that one word sermon, Mary, her life is permanently changed because of the resurrection of Jesus. Mary has gone from horrible grief to unbridled joy, from the lowest depths to the highest heights. Now she knows, she knows it's all true, everything he taught them, and she races off to tell the other disciples the good news. It's still dark when Mary encounters the resurrected Jesus. But the new day is dawning, the first day of the week, the new week, the first day of the new creation. The resurrection changes everything, and nothing will be the same. Allow Jesus to call your name, too. Allow your life to be turned upside down. Jesus assures us that he is alive. And if he finds us weeping before he reminds us of that truth once more, that's fine by him. He understands. That's why he's here. Jesus knew better than anyone that Mary's tears were representative of the tears of all of humanity. This is the weeping, the bitter spilling forth of salty tears that has enveloped the human race for ever so long now. But those tears need not flow any longer. Trust Jesus to be who he said he was, to do what he promised to do, dying for our sake, rising again to new life, so that we can live forever reconciled to God, starting right now. Then we too can join Mary in saying, I have seen the Lord. The Lord is risen. And God's people say, he is risen indeed. Alleluia.
invite you to stand. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and grace. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over water, the Holy Spirit moved at the beginning of creation. Through water, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In water, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death. By it we share in his resurrection. Through it we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we celebrate our fellowship in him in faith. We pray that all who have passed through the water of baptism may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Dear friends, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in his baptism so that we may rise to new life. Now that our Lenten observance is ended, let us renew the promises we made in our baptism when we rejected Satan and all his works and promised to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ. I do. do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in God the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will. Will you strive to safeguard the integrity of God's creation and respect, sustain, and renew the life of the earth? 
God the Creator, the rock of our salvation, has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. May he keep us faithful to our calling, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ has been raised from the dead. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Let us pray. God of life and health, accept the offering of your holy people and grant that we who are baptized into Christ may be perfected in your salvation. In the name of Jesus, the risen Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us eternal life. Therefore, joining our voices with the whole company of heaven, we sing our joyful hymn of praise to proclaim the glory of your name. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it. And gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, We remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. 
Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit. With St. Jude the Apostle and all your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. Lord, we died with you on the cross. Now we are raised to new life. We were buried in your tomb. Now we share in your resurrection. Live in us that we may live in you. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. Giver of all, we are nourished by your Easter sacraments. Fill us with the spirit of love and unite us in faith that we may be witnesses to the resurrection and show your glory to all the world. In the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. Amen. May God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. May God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. Amen. May God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. With the risen life of Christ within you, go in the peace of Christ. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia.